Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the potential for snow and colder weather across the UK and Ireland once again. And actually, we are looking at the potential for fairly widespread significant snow. Uh, and in this video we'll be kind of covering the details of where and when, uh, as well as how long we can kind of expect this colder pattern to last. But starting off right away, we're going to look at the general weather pattern uh, that's going to cause a spill of colder weather. Right now we're going to look uh, at the GFS model here. This is the overview charts that are showing our uh, precipitation with our colours. Uh, purple is forecast snow, our black lines are our isobars, and then our H's and our L's are the areas of high and low pressure. Uh, and you can see during tomorrow we have an uh, area of high pressure which is kind of migrating from being centred over the UK and it starts to move up. Uh, to the northwest towards Greenland and Iceland, kind of in the North Atlantic. And now this is important because as it does so, it then starts to bring in a northerly flow. And you can see that quite clearly here. Uh, this is by Monday, so within a few days' time now, there's the new position of our high pressure uh, kind of across the North Atlantic up towards Greenland there. And now we have a clockwise wind flowing along the ice bars of that high pressure like that. Uh, and so then we start to bring in this northerly uh, across the UK and you can really clearly see that where uh, we can kind of tell all the forecast precipitation is purple indicating it's forecast to be snow uh, and by the way don't take these snow precipitation charts too literally uh, they are kind of it's low resolution so it's generally it's not the best to look at but it gives you kind of an idea of the general overall the overall setup which is why kind of we're using us as the overview so then you'll start to see that during monday that cold air continues to spread further south uh, as you can see there and we actually then start to get a low pressure influence as well this is our low to the south uh, forecast to be generally to the west of kind of spain and portugal by around tuesday wednesday so midweek and then what will happen is that will start to move up to the northeast uh, into the kind of end of next week so that's the kind of general background setup to this uh, cold perhaps snowy spell that's the reason that we're going to be seeing uh, the risk of significant snow now diving into the kind of different aspects of the threat a bit deeper the first uh, kind of real and certain threat of snow is going to be more focused across northern england and it's going to be to do with the risk of snow showers so this chart we're looking at right here is something called the 850 hectopascal uh, temperature so the 850 hectopascal bit uh, that is essentially a measure of pressure and in the kind of weather world we use pressure to determine uh, kind of height because the uh, the weather changes as you get higher up but let's say you're looking at a uh, chart for one meter above ground level well that's going to be very different depending on whether you're on a mountain range uh, at the coast so instead we kind of just use the pressure because also it's kind of a reflection of other things as well such as kind of the, the air mass so it's generally a uh, pretty good kind of overall indicator of the air mass that we're looking at uh, and this is usually around 1.5 kilometers or so it does fluctuate like i said with the uh, like kind of all the other variables density temperature humidity it does fluctuate a bit the exact height but just imagine this to be the temperature around one kilometer or so uh, and so don't take these as the forecast temperatures for the surface level those will be a bit higher but like I said, good representation of the actual air mass. So now that that explanation is out of the way, you can kind of see the point I'm about to illustrate here. So as we get that cold air pushing through, you can see very clearly where that is kind of denoted by the purple, like the properly purple colours there. What's going to happen is that very cold air above has a temperature difference between the surface of the warm sea because it's passing over quite warm water to the north of Scotland here. And the temperature difference means that the warmer, and that's by the way, it's not warm, so it's probably like six, seven degrees Celsius or so, but it's warmer than the air. And so uh, it adds energy to the air and that energy causes showers to form, convection forms. And because the air is so cold, the showers are not falling as rain, they are falling as snow. And so in these northerly setups, we almost always get a pretty hefty stream of showers into the northern coasts. And that's kind of no different uh, in this setup we've got properly cold temperatures there pushing in so by monday tuesday the kind of northern coast of scotland and then later on into parts of ireland and northern ireland and also down kind of exposed coasts we'll be seeing quite a lot of showers uh, and if i use the high resolution models high resolution models are better for resolving things like uh, showers uh, which are part of convection uh, because the kind of the grid squares 
of the model are much smaller so it kind of has a better handle on these smaller things like showers uh, but you can see uh, this is the chart for Sunday and you can already see those purple blobs moving into Scotland there some of them fairly dark purple as uh, pink kind of pink purple some of them fairly dark as well indicating fairly kind of heavy rates but just watch how they really start to pile in and become more wed widespread sorry through the week uh, also looking like they could impact parts of Northern Ireland uh, also possibly down through the east coast as well uh, and some areas will be more exposed or less exposed depending on how the wind direction shifts and changes uh, in these northerlies you may at times have a general northerly flow kind of the average is for a northerly but sometimes it may be slightly more northwesterly which would favor more western areas of the uk to see snow showers sorry snow showers or you may at times see slight shifts to northeasterly which would favor more eastern and northeastern areas of the uk to see snow generally we're expecting this one to be more of a northerly slash northwesterly but still some slight variations are possible but this general area that i'm kind of outlining here is likely to see the bulk of the snow showers uh, pretty much throughout the majority of the entire week um, and if we look at some forecast accumula accumulations from those showers you can see just from those that continuous feed uh, alone we could see fairly widely five to ten centimeters across parts of northern scotland higher over the mountains there and also some hints of some more shower activity further south i would expect the met office to start issuing warnings for this uh, yellow potentially amber warnings but i mean we'll see uh, and that's going to be the first threat of showers sunday monday time so another aspect of these northerlies that we frequently uh, see is kind of small disturbances uh, in the flow that are, like I said, they're small, so that generally increases the uncertainty in the forecast. Uh, we don't quite know where they're going to go. We don't quite know how strong they'll be. But in these unstable northerly flows, we do typically get a lot of them. And you can kind of see them uh, outlined right here. This is one, a very small scale one. Another hint of one here. Uh, this is a chart for Monday. And just watch how they kind of, not nothing particularly noteworthy i mean they're pretty hard to see on this chart but the rising air that they can create uh, allows precipitation to form and that often falls as snow and as you can see it's falling in very cold uh, air there in the air mass chart so undoubtedly this will be snow and so actually what the current models are suggesting is that through tuesday and wednesday we're going to see a couple of these lows pushing through again across parts of uh, scotland uh, northern ireland and also actually into northern england as well uh, and again we're going to use the ukv uh, met office high resolution model because it has a better handle on these small kind of uh, features now do take this with a kind of a grain of salt because like i said these features are very uncertain and this is still a three four days away which in terms of these small lows is a fairly kind of large margin for change this could shift north could shift south could change uh, or could disappear could t uh, entirely but what we're currently expecting is one of these lows to arrive, like I said, during Tuesday. Uh, and you can kind of see there, turns to snow, uh, I mean, pretty much everywhere in Scotland, away from the immediate coasts and lowest, kind of basically the low levels near the coast. But you can see this bring a fairly decent covering if it were to happen. And also something to note is that the kind of the general extent of the precipitation band is kind of aligned like this, uh, northwest to southeast. And then the direction of travel is kind of parallel to that line so some areas could see uh, a longer spell of snow here um, and that could lead to some fairly decent accumulations as you can see there now to complicate it what we could also see is then a second low moving through there uh, and doing kind of the same thing the extent of the precipitation is northwest to southeast and then it runs in that way as well so if this were the exact uh, kind of scenario that we saw then this area of kind of northern England uh, and southern Scotland would see a pretty decent covering. You can see pretty much everywhere in Scotland there, apart from the eastern uh, areas of Scotland, seeing a lot of snow, and then also into southern Scotland and towards northern and northeastern England there. So that is uh, definitely one thing to keep an eye on. Uh, and actually, you can see most models do agree with this situation here, though all kind of slight variations on the same theme. For example, the GFS uh, has... Uh, both of those two one on the Tuesday morning and then another uh, on to kind of Tuesday evening into Wednesday but the general area favored for this is Scotland and Northern England so if you're kind of in this corridor in red keep an eye out uh, Tuesday into Wednesday you could be seeing a longer spell of snow uh, and of course I will update you uh, if this kind of changes but just taking a quick look at the other models here uh, you can see similar things all being shown some of these models aren't quite in range but like kind of you get the the gist of it 
uh, the risk of a longer spell of snow there and just keep an eye on the forecast because the exact details right now are unclear for example the european model uh, kind of takes us slightly further north but that doesn't mean it will happen that's just one particular model run so that's kind of the snow risk for northern the northern half of the country uh, and it actually does look pretty interesting we could see some fairly widespread and significant accumulations um but the uh, the snow risk which is most uncertain but also i'm guessing people uh, watching this channel are probably most interested in is the snow risk for southern england now we've been watching this on the models for a few days now um and it's going to happen as the low i talked about at the beginning of the video which you can see right here on the europe uh, on the european model as that pushes into the high pressure system here so we've got our high to the north that's brought our cold air down over the country we've got our low air to the south that's bringing up uh, mild air as well as moisture which can turn to which actually will form precipitation which can turn to snow but we kind of don't quite know exactly to what extent uh, that is going to happen for example the european model right here brings a band of precipitation as you would expect um, and it's actually quite an elongated band because it's kind of being uh, kind of squeezed by this high pressure so the kind of the upper level disturbance tends to kind of move uh, bent kind of at the bottom of that ridge if i just kind of draw a quick diagram here so let's say our high pressure is here as it is the uh, upper level disturbance can't really move into that high so instead it moves along the bottom of it and so the surface pressure so the surface pressure falls so where the pressure is lowest at the surface is then similarly moves kind of along the base of that high in association with the upper level disturbance and the thing about these kind of setups is because it's kind of elongated where it does push into cold air because the band is quite long you can have prolonged and heavy snowfall but as you can see here on the european model we don't really get any of this in fact we barely get the precipitation band touching the southeast if we contrast this to the gfs you can see the band is a bit further north and in fact we do get a fairly significant snow event uh, during uh, wednesday evening into thursday uh, on the american model like i said this would bring 5 10 perhaps 15 centimeters or snow uh, of snow but there's not much point as of yet focusing on the totals because as I'm about to show you, we just don't really know where that low is going to go. For example, the GFS showed you the European model. This is the GFS model here. If I show you the Canadian model, you can see it's another similar but still slightly different scenario. There's our low pushing in, and you can see what I mean. It's quite elongated. Uh, and similarly to what I was saying earlier, the orientation of the band is parallel to the direction of movement, which means we can get fairly long duration events. And this would similarly be quite a significant snow event uh, this timing slightly different here the general time frame is though kind of tuesday especially then wednesday thursday but like i was saying it's all kind of vaguely different so we cannot say with much certainty what we are going to uh, see in terms of the snow threat exactly for example uh, gfs model uh, this is the ensemble sorry not the gfs model the gfs ensembles uh, are showing the each of these different numbers are showing the different possible positions of our low pressure system and this is valid for six o'clock next wednesday uh, and you can see the pink and purple colors are indicating well the general average is for below uh average sorry is the general average is for low pressure so we do know very strongly that low pressure will be somewhere in this zone but all the different numbers um as i mentioned the different possible positions they're quite spread out for example you have some further north uh, and further to the east like these ones but you also have some further south and this has a big difference um, because the kind of precipitation band if it was back here further south the low was back here then the precipitation band would kind of be across northern france no real snow threat for southern england at the same time if that's kind of one of the further north solutions then that snow band is pushing into southern england and we're seeing a significant, uh, significant snow event uh, and just to il illustrate that quite nicely here this is the european model ensemble um uh, and so this is one particular run which shows the kind of higher end possibility for Wednesday. That is, we get a big band of snow associated with that low pushing into southern England and Wales, and all the areas in dark blue and purple showing very deep, significant snow accumulations, uh, as you can see right here. However, if we go to uh, a different uh, kind of member, for example, this one here shows absolutely nothing. It's completely blank. There is no snow whatsoever across in England same thing here if i go to another uh another member 
this one again shows a significant snow event across southern England uh, right here. However, if I go to another one, you can see that similar thing. Uh, there is sorry, there is also no snow on this one. So at this stage, the snow threat further north is more certain. The snow threat here is less certain because we do know there will be a low pressure. We just don't know whether it's going to be over France or over England, and that obviously has a very big kind of difference on who sees snows or not because some people will see none, some people will see some. So it's too early to say where exactly we'll see snow. It's too early to say when. We do know it's going to be sometime Wednesday to Thursday next week, perhaps a bit earlier, but generally Wednesday into Thursday. In terms of where I said we don't really know where, but the current most favoured area would be kind of this region here, the general kind of M4 and vicinity, and then southwards. This does include London, but if this does go further south, as models like the European model have, then there's no point really uh, in even getting excited because like, there's not going to be snow. So my advice is, in terms of this, keep an eye on the weather models, keep an eye on the forecast if you're in this red box, because things will change. Uh, I can guarantee you the next model run uh, of the GFS and the GAM will be different, uh, and then similarly the next run of the European will be different. So things will be constantly changing until at least kind of three, four days. That's when we might have a better confidence. Um, but until then, keep up to date with these forecast videos and the weather models, and be aware that while we do not know exactly there is the risk of disruptive snow uh, now finally you may be wondering what is kind of the uh, evolution of this cold spell how long it will last so this is the european model weekly pressure anomalies you can see for this week that we're about to enter enter into this is the week of our cold spell and there's a high pressure to the north free and cold air colliding with those lows from the south bringing the risk of a disruptive battle round snow uh, snowfall event across the south as well as areas of snow further north that we discussed earlier now towards the end of january you can see here the general signal is for it to become uh, more unsettled the low pressures are likely to become more at play and actually the ends of many of our weather models here for example the gfs is showing a bigger return to westerlies as you would expect for this time of year same thing on the european model uh, as you can see there now i wouldn't take this too literally because in the past some weather models have underestimated how easy it is uh, sorry, overestimated, have overestimated how easy it is to, um, well, so basically what I'm trying to say is some models have shown an, uh, a low pressure dominated pattern when really the high pressure has won out and we remained blocked uh, and cold up for longer. So from the kind of 18th, 19th onwards, the current modeling is suggesting a return to unsettled weather, but it is possible that it ends up being I, uh, either more of kind of a settled pattern, this seems unlikely, or the more possible option, uh, aside from it being unsettled, is that we see more of a battleground scenario than these uh, kind of models show, and that there will be a further risk of disruptive snowfall. Now, I think that's a relatively low possibility, but it is something to be aware of. Um, and then, finally, turning into February, it does look like we may see again the risk of high pressure to our north which would possibly bring the risk of further uh, cold and maybe snowy spells but that is getting quite far into the future but anyway that's the kind of summary for the next week and then kind of further into the future i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please subscribe uh, and leave a like uh, but thank you so much for watching everyone and have a great day Bye bye